Welcome back to the shop. So I want to go ahead and start on this rotor shaft job here. Got, got some repairs to do on this end. And as I already showed, the, uh, the end here is corroded and it's a little undersized. It's got some wear on it. Uh, the main thing that they wanted when they brought it to me is they asked if I could, this area here, okay, there's a seal that runs right here. What we usually do is we turn these down, we'll machine a stainless sleeve, shrink it on there, and machine it back to size. That's a really good fix, okay? And that's how I normally fix it. And on the, on the ends right here, I usually just weld these up and then turn them back. Sometimes these are okay, but this has got a lot of corrosion on it. And I did check it, it's a couple thousandths undersized. So um, they said if I wanted to, you know, let's just go ahead and fix it all. So I decided to, I'm gonna use a different technique to fix this than what I normally do. And I've talked about this before. Uh, and I've got some stuff here that I'm gonna show you. Instead of metalizing this, I, I could metalize this area right here and it would work fine, but um, not so sure about the end here for the impeller. It would probably work, but I'd rather not do it. So I want to use my Uteloy torch. And a Uteloy torch is a little different than a spray welder, okay? I, I went ahead and got it right here so I can show you. That's my Uteloy torch, okay? You can see it right there, Uteloy. And this works a lot like brazing. So here's the powder. There's, there's a little bottle of powder, and I'll talk about this here. So when you're using a Uteloy torch, you're, you, it's like you're brazing. You're getting the part hot, and as you get it hot enough, you press the trigger here, and that allows the uh, powder to come through, and it melts, and you actually build it up a lot like brazing. But the powders are designed specifically for different applications, and, I, and they, have, they have different characteristics than just using a a standard brazing rod okay so it it works really good I've done a little bit of practicing with it here recently all right here's a here's a little slab of uh, hot roll plate some flat bar that I uh, taken that I found down here and I've got I use three different powders with the Uteloy torch and one of the th this one right here on this side Okay, that is this bronzo chrome, and that's a really good powder for a lot of general build-up repair applications. It's machinable, and it's got uh, very good, uh, just very good characteristics in the powder that makes it durable, tough, strong, and uh, wear-resistant and corrosion-resistant. This one in the middle here, I believe that was called Chrome Tech that I use, that one's also good, machinable, but the bronzo chrome actually, it builds a little bit better, okay? This one here is another one that I was just playing with. Uh, I believe it was called Boro, Boro Tech. This is one of those that is super hard. I don't know if you can see it in the light. There's a couple places on there where I tried to scratch it with a file it is super hard, it just glides over it, you can't cut it. You, you, I mean, you have to grind it if you're gonna do something with this, but this is for a different application. So I'm gonna use this powder here, which is this Bronzo Chrome 10185. So what we're gonna to have to do is go ahead and set this up in the lathe first and get our steady rest set, okay? We'll chuck it, get it, get it running true, get our steady rest set on this bearing journal here and then once I get this set, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skin this, these two journals, I'm gonna skin those down a little bit. The same reason why you need to do it whenever you're metalizing. You need, you don't wanna just build up right on top of the, uh, the surface that you're repairing. You wanna take that surface down a little bit so that whenever you build it up and then you go back and you machine it, you're not cutting every bit of that off there. You actually have a nice area that it's that it's built up. So we're gonna turn those down, probably 20, 20 thousandths maybe, somewhere around that range. 
I'm also going to fill that keyway in. We're going to build that up. We're going to fill that in and then we'll turn these two diameters and then set it up and just mill a new keyway in it. And this end right here should be good to go. It'll, it'll all be corrosion resistant so they won't have this over time, this pitting and rusting like that's going on here. So that's the plan. Uh, let's go ahead and get it set up and then we'll start and I'll, I'll show you how it goes along the way. I, I don't know how well the video is going to work with the uh, when I'm actually doing the, the welding here. Uh, it may just be too bright to see anything, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll see what I can do to get you some uh, video of that process, okay? <laughs> Real quick, I was going to mention some specifics about the powder here that I'm going to use, the Bronzo Chrome, okay? It says, best combined hardness, machinability, abrasion, corrosion, and heat resistant, nickel-based alloy coating for steels, nickel alloys, cast iron and stainless, superior toughness, unlimited buildup capability, low friction, high wear resistance. Okay, so that sounds pretty good right there. So we're setting up in the lathe. I'm going to use my collet chuck. I'm using a 1 and 3 16 collet on this end. That's, it's very close to what that bearing journal is turned to, so that collet will work. And I'm setting the I'm setting the steady rest up because it's almost always when you get a shaft like this, you see all the corrosion here. The end of it is usually corroded just the same. There's whenever this is made, there's a center cut here. All right, well the corrosion has got it messed up. So it's almost always gonna be off. So I go ahead and I set it up with the center, with the existing center like that, and I go ahead and set the steady rest to the bearing journal so that it's running true here. This is where you want it running true. Your bearing journal, your bearing journal, this machine true with your bearing journals, okay? And this should all be lined up with the with the journals there. So go ahead and get it set there and then back your center out. Now with this being off a little, you're not a hundred percent in alignment like you should be. But you're close enough that you can come in here and retool this, get it cut straight, then put your center back in it and reset your steady rest. In our case, I want to go ahead and do a little bit of turning here to bring this diameter down on both of these. So we'll go ahead and recut the center again. I mean, we'll do it now. We'll, we'll touch the center, put our live center back in there and do a little turning. And the reason why I want to use that is because this is hanging out too far, okay? You, you might get a little chatter off of that. I'd rather support it with the center. I'm going to just use a threading tool. And what I did, you see that the grinder's over there running. I relieved the bottom of this right here so that it has clearance. I can come in here with a tool and touch that. I'll have to probably raise it up just a little bit, but that's why you're having to grind the bottom so that you have clearance there. But this is a temporary recut. After I weld this, it is more than likely this is going to be moved a little. It's going to bend it and warp it a little. So we'll have to recut that again after we weld it. Okay. I just use a little bit of whey oil here for the steady rest. You know, I'm, this runs on the bronze jaws here. Go ahead and get the top one set down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up just a touch. You can see what I'm talking about there. Just coming in, letting that tool rub just a little bit. I can still see a low spot there, so I'm going to go ahead and do it again a little bit deeper.
That should hold it. You can see right there, a little low, but it's cut. It's cut up inside there, so that should, that should allow us to uh, have a true center there. All right, one thing I want to point out that's uh, important to remember when you're doing, when you're going to do build-up work like this, is to measure everything and, and make a sketch before you start welding it up. Otherwise, you don't know what you what you had and what you got to come back to. So, you know, so that, like here, that's what I did. I just made a simple little sketch shows the the journal lengths here and here, and the diameters that they'll be finished to, and then also the keyway width. That's a three sixteenths key. It doesn't have to come all the way up in here. That's just how it was uh, it was manufactured. They used like a horizontal type mill. Um, I'll just make my key go to this shoulder and stop right there. And I went ahead and uh, I backed off on the steady rest. Don't need that right now because it wasn't running perfectly true anyway. We're going to go ahead and install our center there. And we'll, we'll go ahead and undercut it with the, uh, using the live center. There's how it's running. Everything looks good. I'm going to use a, a brazed on tool bit. All right, so uh, here we go. Just for reference here, we'll look and see. This is our 7 8 journal for the impeller. And it's about four and a half under right there. So that's a really loose fit on an impeller. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and skin it. Just gonna touch it there. I'm gonna dial in 20 thousandths. We're just feeding five thousandths right now. No need to rush across there. All right, let's look at that. I think that'll be okay. I'm going to, instead of blasting it, whenever I get through turning, I'm going to take this over to my wire wheel and go ahead and wire brush the keyway, the undercut here, and the end of it. We'll probably put a little bit of build up here on the end, see? And uh, once we set it back up, we'll face it off, and hopefully we can end up with a nice square edge here with a, with a, with a little chamfer. I think that's going to be good there. We're going to do the same thing up on this journal here. spots I believe same thing I'm just going to wire wheel it get the rust off of it and we'll let the powder build those low spots up go ahead and get the steady rest set bring it back because once we get through our welding come back to the lathe set it up on the steady rest and the collet and then retool the end here Alright, 
see you at the welding table. All right, guys, I wanted to do another practice run on that on that piece there and try another shot with the camera, but I'm getting kind of low on oxygen. I've only got 500 pounds in the tank, so I'm afraid that if, if I don't get, get started on this, I may not have enough to finish it, but there should be plenty in there to do this job. I've got this other little prototype piece that I've been working on for a while that I had never showed. I've been trying it on some welding shots. And this piece here just fits over the, uh, the lens of the camera there to try to get some arc shots, but I haven't really been happy with the way it's been turning out. But I'm gonna try it on the torch and see if it, see how it turns out later on. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. So I'll start with doing some preheating. And once it starts getting hot, that's when I'll start applying some of the powder because it has to be a certain temp for it. It'll start flowing. Once it starts flowing, it's kind of like brazing. I've got this on here to kind of protect the bearings on all that. Uh, this is supposed to be some good heat resistant cloth. I'll start with the keyway. Once I get it all uh, potted up good. that's up inside that hole there and hopefully it'll burn out and stay clean all right we're starting to get hot That's the keyway there, so we'll go ahead and go around it. Put it start building up. kind of hard to see what's going on there but it's building up and flowing around the shaft
shot with the lens on there. Once it gets pretty hot, it's a little hard to see, but that's been flowing in there pretty good. Uh, this end down here, the impeller end's acting a little funny. I don't know what's going on with that, but this area up here is flowing really nice. It's slicking out real good. I want to grab some calipers and just get a quick little measurement and see what we're at. Well, I let this thing cool down. And the end out here, the impeller end, I'm not, <laughs> I know it looks kind of bad, man. I'm, that's not, uh, not too pretty. And I think I actually lost some there. The, the problem that I was finding on this end right here, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's basically hollow because it's drilled and tapped, is getting, keeping the, the proper heat range. And I was finding that as I was trying to build it up, it was getting too hot and the material was trying to roll and flow down. And it looks like it might have just dripped off right there. I'm not sure. I might have to redo this in this impeller in. But this this area here for your seal seal journal looks great. And that's how you see how it flowed in there. It's almost like brazing. It flowed in real good, but I don't know about this right here. I might have been getting some contamination from the inside of the tapped hole also. <clears throat> so I'm not really sure. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and do some turning and see how this end turns out, okay? I think it's time to fill my can up. First thing I'm going to do is is use a. We're going to use this tool here, and I'm just going to square the end up. I think I'm just about there. it up a little I can see it rubbing Some of that metal rolled up into the tapped hole there, so I've got to clean that out. I'm going to use a 5 16 two fluid end mill here just to just to clean it up, <clears throat> make that hole round, and now I've got to run a tap back in it. Just 
using a 3816 hand tap, cleaning up, cleaning the threads out. They're pretty crusty. All right, getting ready to start turning now. And I'm going to loosen these up. I want to come off my steady rest. I've already got my first distance set, one and three eighths. All right, we're going to start turning. Thank <laughs> you. 